investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey, and if you like Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, and Berkshire Hathaway, you may be wondering if there's any other company out there that's like Berkshire Hathaway, given its enormous success. And one such company that may be following the Berkshire recipe and cooking up awesome investing results is Markel Corporation. That's another insurance and holding company that strives to be like Berkshire in its culture and tries to also have really good investing outcomes. And coincidentally, this company was founded in 1930, the same year that Warren Buffett was born. And recently it's come into some more attention because Berkshire recently invested $620 million into Markel. So that may be something to look into if Markel might be part of our circle of competence and if we might like to potentially invest in such a company. And while I went to Markel's shareholder meeting in May, 2022, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. This is just for me to share information that I've learned about Markel to see if they're within my circle of competence to want to potentially invest in. So I hope you enjoy what I'm talking about today and please be sure to like and subscribe to my video and YouTube channel. Thanks. And to be totally honest with you, even though I'd heard of Markel in passing, I hadn't really started getting to know them until this last month, where I went to the Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting in Omaha, Nebraska, and on May 1st, 2022, Markel hosted this brunch panel where we heard from the co-CEOs, Tom Gaynor and Richie Witt, and also another one of their executives named Michael Heaton. And at that panel was where I first started really getting to know a little bit more about Markel. So I was inspired to want to attend their Markel shareholder meeting that happened 10 days after that brunch in Omaha and their Markel shareholders meeting happened in Richmond, Virginia. So I went and drove all the way down there just to see what they're all about and start getting to know this company more to see if it's something that I would like to really invest in because what I learned from them is that they're like a mini Berkshire and that just sounds good to me and there has to be something magical if they've been pretty successful and if Berkshire Hathaway is willing to invest in them. So I felt fortunate to be able to meet the co-CEO, Tom Gaynor, who starting in 2023 will be the sole CEO of Markel Corporation. And I saw him both in Omaha and again in Richmond, Virginia. So that was pretty cool because it's like meeting a really super investor who has actually compounded tremendously since 1990 as part of Markel, where his investment track record is 14.4% per year. And that's pretty amazing because you can generally expect stock market returns of between 7 to 10 percent on average and if any investor can do above that range then they're pretty amazing so my hat goes off to Tom Gaynor and the team at Markel who seem to be doing a pretty awesome job considering that investing is not an easy thing to do so with that some background information on Markel like I said they were founded in 1930 by founder Samuel Markel who founded it originally as the Mutual Casualty Company in Norfolk, Virginia. And then later on, they relocated to Richmond, Virginia. And they started out with insuring jitney buses and then later on, selectively, some long-haul truckers. And since then, they've grown to have three engines of their earnings. So what they do is they have insurance operations, investments, and the third engine is what they call Markel Ventures, which invests in opportunities and businesses that are outside of insurance. And that's kind of the high level gist of what Markel is all about. And I'll talk more about what I've learned so far. And we often hear that a lot of good businesses are either founder led or run as family businesses. And in many ways, the Markel Corporation is still influenced by the Markel family as Stephen Markel is the chairman of the board. And they have this creed called the Markel style, which represents their founders principles and values where they have a commitment to success and a zealous pursuit of excellence. And they want to provide an atmosphere where people can reach their personal potential and they strive to share success with everyone and in other words achieve a winning result for all stakeholders involved so i think that's pretty awesome of markel that they have a lot of family values and they want everyone to feel included as part of their business success 
And in the 36 years since going public in 1986, Markel has grown to have a market cap of $19 billion with a current share price of around $1,400 per share. And they have some similarities with Allegheny Insurance that Berkshire has recently agreed to acquire for $11.6 billion and that they both write insurance and invest in a bunch of other businesses. So that makes them both like mini Berkshires. And we can see why Berkshire Hathaway may have wanted to add a complimentary insurance business to its equity portfolio and having invested $620 million in Q1 2022. And I suspect that Berkshire bought heavily into Markel during the middle of March because we can see Markel going from around $1,200 per share to reaching around $1,500 per share at its height in March 2022 before kind of leveling off a little bit from there. But nonetheless, Berkshire may have averaged Average potentially 1350 per share so maybe that's something to keep track of and see if we can tease out further how much Berkshire may have paid for Markel but they seem to be in pretty good company because some of the comparable investments that Berkshire has that are in similar size include Liberty Media Formula One and also Globe Life and also T-Mobile so it looks like Markel has a pretty good spot at number 32 out of 49 equity positions as part of Berkshire's equity portfolio for now. And if we take a look at Markel's high-level financial information, at the end of Q1 2022, they had total investments of about $23 billion, which is down about $367 million from Q4 2021 when it was $23.4 billion. And they have $3.9 billion of cash and equivalents and $4.4 billion of senior long-term debt. And so if we consider a little bit more about some of their financial prospects, while it might have been the first time that Berkshire invested in Markel, Markel has actually been invested in Berkshire for a while because they own about $1.1 billion of Berkshire stock in both Berkshire A and B shares. And the total Markel equity portfolio had a market value of $8.4 billion at the end of Q1. And that's about 36% of their overall total investment figure. And so if we take a closer look at what some of their stock positions might be, their top 10 holdings make up 44% of the portfolio. And even though they have a total of about 128 positions in the equity portfolio, according to the latest 13F, it looks like they're highly concentrated in their top holdings being in Berkshire Hathaway, like I said, and also Brookfield Asset Management, Google, Amazon, Deer Company, Home Depot, Diageo, Disney, Visa, and Apple. So to round out those top 10 is a pretty good look for Markel in that they seem to have made pretty good investments in some really tremendous companies. And if you might happen to peruse through Markel Corporation's investor relations events and presentations page, you would happen upon some videos of the recent annual shareholders meeting and also the Markel Omaha brunch at which I asked a question and you could hear Tom Gaynor's response to me. But if you go back to the annual meeting shareholders video, you could hear Tom Gaynor offer a simple math formula to arrive at a suggested value of what each Markel share might be worth. And so if we take this math formula, he said to take the total investments, subtract the debt, and divide that sum by the total shares outstanding. And so if we do that and take the Q1 numbers, there were total investments of $23 billion, subtract the $4.4 billion of debt and divide by 13.57 million shares outstanding. And we might arrive at a potential per share value of Markel of $1,372 per share. And if we add back in the cash of $3.9 billion, then that would actually make the figure go up to $1,659 per share. So it might be within that range of value. And it looks like we might be on the lower end of that range with Markel trading a little bit above that 1372 figure, but potentially it could be worth much more. So Definitely do your own math and arrive at your own valuation of what Markel might be worth. But if we can believe Tom, then that might be what it's worth. 
And if you also enjoy pondering compounding magic, Tom Gaynor, who has also been Markel's chief investment officer since 2004, wrote in the 2021 annual report that the Markel share price ended December 31, 2021 at $1,234 per share. And if it compounds at an annual compounded growth rate of 13.5638% per year, then in 12 years, it will have a share price of $5,678 per share, which if you get the sequence, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I thought that was kind of fun and interesting to consider if in fact Markel can compound at that rate. And they actually already have. If you multiply $1,234 at 13.5638%, they've already hit 1401 by early June 2022. So they've met their quota for 2022 if they were trying to grow at that rate. So maybe they'll grow at a faster or slower rate from there. But either way, if you just had some fun with that math, that might be another fun way to think about the possibilities of how well Markel might be able to grow. And in general, I've just guessed that they might be a steady 10 to 13% growth compounder. And I need to do way more homework to arrive at a better overall growth rate but that was just my overall sense looking at their overall financial history that they also include in the annual report and it just shows how long-term minded that Tom Gaynor and the team at Markel is because they want you to consider the track record of Markel in 12-year intervals going back to 1986 and also looking at different periods of growth and how well they compare to each period of growth that we might analyze. So I thought that was pretty awesome of them to include all that. And speaking of periods of performance, it's important to try to assess how well any given stock is comparing to certain benchmarks. And as an example, just so you know that I'm not just only singing praises for Markel, it looks like they've underperformed the S&P 500 from the period between 2014 through 2021, where if we look at those seven years, the S&P 500 generated returns cumulative of about 105% compared to Markel bringing 80%. So so for the S&P 500, that works out to about 15% per year. But unfortunately for Markel, that only worked out to 11.5%. So although Markel has been slightly underperforming the S&P 500 for the last seven years, maybe they're about to outperform. So in spite of all this, Tom Gaynor has been a wildly successful value investor, and that's according to Investopedia. So definitely give that a read. And also, I like to look at what some insider trade trends might be and it looks like going back to November last year and also in May 2022 Tom Gaynor has invested a little bit more into Markel at stock price averages of about $1,250 to $1,300 per share so maybe that's what he thinks is a good price to pay to buy more into Markel and so you can be the judge at what you ultimately might believe is a good price to pay for Markel shares if you choose to invest. And while investing and in insurance is definitely the meat and potatoes of Markel Corporation, which I definitely need to study way more to see if I can truly understand how they're operating, but so far it looks like they've been pretty profitable with their insurance operations because they have combined ratios that are profitable, so that's a good sign. But the one thing I wanted to note was how Tom Gaynor emphasized their growing Markel Ventures businesses, which they listed about 19 of them on the website, but I'm sure they have more that they either own or have a substantial stake in. And this has grown from bringing in an EBITDA of around $24 million in 2010 to now bringing in an EBITDA of $403 million in 2021. So that's a growth of about 16 times what it was about a decade ago. So we can see that Markel Ventures is a burgeoning area that Markel is looking to grow even more. And some of them include a heavy emphasis in real estate and housing, like they have home builders as well as they're also heavily emphasized in heavy industry like in cranes and car haulers and concrete and they have other categories that I listed as other in terms of tech consulting, medical concierge, and they also have some 
businesses in retail and farms and food. So that's just the tip of the iceberg of what Markel Ventures might be all about. So if you're interested in learning more about what areas Markel is specializing in, I definitely encourage you to do so. And so if you found this video helpful or you felt like you better understood Markel, or if you'd also like to share some insights with me that you know about Markel, I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I wish you well on your journey to being the best investor you can be. Till next time.